<laughs> All right, you're going to see a great show. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. The performer you're about to see is a veterinarian, a punster, and one of the top coin magicians who has lectured and performed all over the world. He has won two international competitions, and he is the driving force behind the famous New York Coin Magic Seminars. Let's give a warm welcome to Dr. Michael Rubenstein. Hey, how you all doing? I am so excited to be here tonight because tonight I get to present a classic of coin magic. That's right, and I get to do so with two amazing assistants. On my right, I have... Devin. Devin, really? That's my wife's name. Hi. Hi. And on my left, I have... Joe. Joe, really? That's my wife's name. Hi. <laughs> so the trick that I'm going to do for you guys tonight <laughs> has been around for a long, long time. In fact, I've been able to trace this trick all the way back to Jesus. Montero, Belleville, New Jersey. <laughs> and it is said that after he performed this trick, he was burned at the stake. House where he was eating, the plate was too hot. <laughs> so, a classic of coin magic, and for this, I just need to borrow from you guys four 1968 silver half dollars. You guys have? No? See, I had the four half dollars, but I exchanged them for 200 pennies. I knew I shouldn't have, but at the time, it made a lot of sense. Uh, but, <laughs> but no problem. Magicians always have coins hanging around. <laughs> you just got to know how to find them. So the first coin is easy to find. You see, whenever magicians perform, they always wear their hearts on their sleeves. But I'm a little different. When I perform, I wear a coin on my sleeves. And there's the first coin. Of course, I just told everybody that magicians really do use their sleeves. Secret's out. But I bet my friends that I could find the second coin without using my sleeves. He told me to put my money where my mouth is. So I did. And there's the second coin. Hope this coin's feeling better, though, because before it was feeling a bit down in the mouth. <laughs> hey, I don't go for the laugh. I go for the groan. The bigger, the better. Which is why, that's why I only work for grown-ups. <laughs> now, now, the third coin's around here somewhere. And wait, wait, I see it. Don't move, because I think it's right over here in your ear. And be honest, that was a little bit eerie, wasn't it? <laughs> I know, but I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, did he really produce that coin out of my ear? And if he did, does that mean that I can get exact change every time I go to the supermarket? I don't know. <laughs> it's a mystery. But that's the third coin. The fourth coin I keep in a very special place, which is certainly nothing to sneeze at, because I got it right over here in my nose. Now, how long has that been in there? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but I could breathe better now. That's because I used the decoin Justin. <laughs> now, probably not the best time to say this after plucking that out of my nose. But, hey, feel free to check them out. Make sure there are no trap doors, secret assistants, pieces of chocolate. Everything look good? Yeah. That's great because that was, like, amazing. That looked like an episode of CSI, <laughs> Coin Scrutiny Investigations. But actually, we're going to use these coins to do something that I call the impossible for coin trick. And I call it that for two reasons. For one thing, it uses four coins. But I'm going to do this for you guys four times. The first time I do this trick, you're going to be surprised. The second time I do this trick, you're going to be bewildered. The third time I do this trick, you're going to be amazed. But the fourth time I do this trick, you're going to say that it's impossible. Now, would you be surprised to know that if I wiggle my hand like this, the first coin vanishes? Well, it really doesn't vanish. It just travels over to here. Now, that's the first coin. And a bit of a surprise, right? I know I got goosebumps. <laughs> but, but what's more than a surprise, what's bewildering is that if I close both hands and I give them a shake, the second coin travels across just like that. Now, it's bewildering because the coin started here, and it traveled all the way over here, but you couldn't see it travel. That's because it went by magic. But if you listen very carefully, what's amazing is that even if you can't see it go, you could hear it arrive. Watch. There it goes. Listen. Did you hear that? That third coin goes right across. Thank you. Now, so far, thank you. You've been surprised, perhaps bewildered, and maybe even amazed. But that's not the name of this trick. Oh, no. I call this the impossible for a coin trick, and I call it that for a reason. Joe, how many coins are on the table? And how many coins do you see in my hand? Three. I'd like you to give me your right hand palm up. I'm going to give you my three coins to hold. I want you to close your hand over them and turn your hand palm down, holding them really tight, as if Joe's life hung in the balance. Okay? <laughs> Let's see if we can trust her. Close your hand really tight around them. Turn your hand palm down. Perfect. I think you're okay. I'm going to take this coin and hold it in my hand, as if my life hangs in the balance, which it kind of does, because if this trick doesn't work, I'm going to die on stage. <laughs> so I'll tell you what. Hold your hand up just a little bit higher. Perfect. Remember, you have three, and I have one. Now, remember not to blink. This is very important, because we all know that the hand can always fool the eye, sometimes the nose, and maybe even the mouth. But it never, ever can fool the audience who have been burning my hand like a laser beam since we started this trick, which is why, under test conditions, it would be impossible for my coin to vanish. Now, do you remember how many coins I put into your hand? 
I'd like you to put them on the table one at a time, and Joe, you count that loud for her as she does so. One, two, three, four. The impossible four-coin trick. Thank you. Thank you.